What's going on guys? Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. We cover everything style, grooming, fitness related. Today we're giving my buddy Chris a much needed makeover. Chris is in sales at Google. So what that means is he needs to project authority, respect, competence, and the wardrobe that he has right now, he was struggling to do that. And he wants something that's authentic to him, authentic to his message that he wants to send. And so we're gonna go and do a whole makeover for Chris. Let's do it. Travis, Chris, Chris, thanks for being here, man. How you doing? Good, man, how you doing? Good, good to see you. All right, well, where do we get started? What's the process? Usually the first thing I do when I start working with guys is we go through a style discovery process. What I mean by that is, um, one of the mistakes a lot of guys make is they tend to look at pictures of other people and try to recreate that outfit, but then it doesn't feel authentic to them. Mm, or I've been there before, man. It totally. doesn't feel like yeah. them. They feel like a poser, like they're wearing a mask or something like that. This is our foundation. This is where we establish our why, our authentic self, and then we start building a wardrobe based on who you are. The process that I like to do, I learned this from one of my style mentors, his name's Tanner Guzzi. He has what's called the style archetypes. And I've actually built on this a little bit, but um, for simplicity's sake, there's four archetypes. There's, there's the refined gentleman, there's the rugged gentleman, there's the rakish gentleman, Ooh. and then there's the rudimentary gentleman. Cool names, by the way. <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, all ours. Let me let me kind of show you okay. um, how this works. If I were to draw like a four by four matrixy here, on the left side here we have refined. On the top up here we have rakish, and on the right side we have rudimentary, and on the bottom we have rugged. And I'll go into a little bit on each of these. So the refined guy, think Mad Men, think. Don Draper, mm. Suits, their Wall Street banker. This guy is usually influenced a lot by financial gain. Um, he likes to show status with his clothing. So when we shop for the refined gentleman, we're usually getting suits, we're usually getting ties, different things like that. And then you jump to the opposite side of this major scene, you have the rudimentary guy. This is the guy who is, you know, I'm a t-shirt and jeans type of guy. I don't like to dress up. I like to keep it simple, rudimentary, the minimalist. He's got, you know, five white t-shirts and like three pairs of the same pants and he just wears that all the time. There's ways to build on that and make it look really good. It sounds like, you know, like uh, trending Steve Jobs, didn't he really simplify his wardrobe? Yeah, we'll get yeah. to that. Steve, okay. th that's a little different because once you oh, get up okay. to like Mark Zuckerberg and Steve yeah, Jobs, yeah, yeah. they like to get, give off the message that they're approachable. That's why Steve Jobs, always had the same uniform, the black turtleneck, mm, okay. the dad jeans and the New Balance sneakers. So he wanted, even though he was the CEO of a multi-million dollar company, he wanted to give off the impression that he's just an approachable dad that, that anyone can talk to. But if we go over to the rakish guy, so this is, think, think about a musician, a performer. He's wearing Pharrell or David Bowie, yeah. right? So they would wear, their body was almost like a canvas and they would, they would, get very fashion forward. So that, you know, when you we see people walking on the runways, things like that, they're, the extreme of that is like the rakish. They're using their body as a canvas and their clothing is the art. Okay. And then the opposite of that is the rugged guy. So this is a guy, think about the outdoorsman. I'm laughing because that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you're probably already getting an idea of where yeah. you're gonna fall in this matrix. And keep in mind, you don't have to be at an extreme. You can, you can be yes. in between somewhere. Like for me, I'll show you where I fall. Okay. I'm a combination of rudimentary and rakish with a tiny bit of refined thrown in. So like I would probably fall like- oh, Wow, you're versatile. I would probably fall like right here. Like this is Travis. Because I, I like to keep things simple and minimalist. And I also like to wear leather and ripped jeans and Chelsea boots. So I'm, I'm pushing the rakish scale a little bit. And then I also like to dress up, and, and this is sort of an elevated casual outfit that I'm wearing now, a button down with a sweater, leather sneakers. I do move over a little bit to the refined side. Okay. If you had to pick where you would fall on here, where, where do you think you would fall? 
The first two things I think about are refined and rudimentary. Um, I say refined because I'm working with executives to set their business strategy. I'm in sales, right? So it's important to look refined, but at the same time, I don't want to be so over the top suits every day, all day. I want to be approachable because I am, I'd like to think I, I want to be down to earth. Perhaps shifting closer to refined yet also maintaining a rudimentary approachable um, aspect. And I do like the idea of rakish, given that at heart, even though I'm in business, I'm a creative, right? I've got mm -hmm. this channel. so. That could be interesting to have a little touch of rakish. I'm yeah. not full out there, you know. You don't have like, to that's, be. Those are the three. I, I'm i not rugged. Like, do I look rugged? <laughs> <laughs> not but, right now. Yeah, yeah, I could be. Yeah. So we'll see. And here's one thing, by the way, lifestyle-wise. I'm going to be in California. There's going to be some great hiking opportunities. Okay. So it could be, but that's more of a one-off. You see what I'm saying? So we'll bring in, because okay. that's the next piece, is we, I like to bring in you know, where, like location, weather. Oh, dude, like uh, gym clothing, by the body way. Body type. Yeah, okay, so okay, like so. we're gonna take into account your body type, your hair color, your eye color. Let's um, go. We're gonna take into account the weather, where you're gonna be living, your occupation. Like all of these things are gonna play into the wardrobe we're gonna build. But this is just like the foundation that we're gonna build on top of. If, if you sense. can't tell, I'm already like a kid in a candy shop. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean your, your service is incredible. Let's let's dive in. I would throw you. Let's. So you say you want to be kind of in the middle of refined and rudimentary with a tiny bit of rakish thrown in? Yeah. So I would say, let's let's put you right here. Because I am quirky. That's not, I'm like, is, I do have this, this artistic Chris. quirky side and my mom's a professional portrait painter. We might not get to the rakish today because we want to, this is going to be your 90% of what you wear. Yeah. But I, I can definitely make suggestions on pieces to throw in to get that little bit of rakish going on. But I say let's focus on building the bulk of your wardrobe between this refined and rudimentary. Yeah, so, so I mean, get... let's think, like, I'm gonna be traveling three times a month and mm -hmm. mostly doing business engagements. You so know? you're gonna to need to pack light and you're gonna to need to make sure that everything matches because you don't wanna be packing 20 pieces of clothing no. in a suitcase. You know, you're going, you're, you're constantly traveling. We're gonna to get to a point where you can essentially throw five pieces of clothing in a suitcase and you can get 20 outfits from it. And that's partly why I came to you, right? Because putting together clothing before, it just was a lot of work. Yeah. yeah I appreciate Perfect. your simplifying. Things. Yeah, we'll be able, you'll be able to close your eyes, walk into your wardrobe, grab anything, and you're gonna know that it matches. Awesome. So speaking of wardrobe, I actually wanna take a look at your wardrobe if you wanna go there next. We can... Oh boy, I hope it's not too cringeworthy. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Travis, this is what we're working with, man. All right. Tell me what you think. Yeah, let's there take a look in here. Yeah. The goal right now when we're going through the closet, everything needs to be to fall into that refined rudimentary because you want to dress up and then you also want to have some elevated casual looks to be a little more casual. And another thing we're going to be looking for is versatility. When we look at colors, when we look at uh, how everything matches, what we want is for you, essentially, like, because right now, if you were to close your eyes and grab something in this wardrobe. Okay, I'm gonna it, try it. Yeah, let's try it. It would probably. I'm gonna go over here. Yep. Oh, what is that? Is that a hoodie? Yep. It's a Google hoodie. It's a Google hoodie. So, I got too much Google swag on this. I know you work it's for like... Google. I wouldn't wear this to a sales meeting, though. Absolutely. So, let me just give you an example, real quick. Okay. So, like this piece, this is very rugged, um, it's flannel, there's a lot of pattern going on you're not gonna be able to match this with a lot of things. This is incredibly unversatile. What we're looking for with versatility are your navies, um, your solids. The less pattern, the more versatile it's gonna be. And we're also looking for things to fit you really nicely. So for example, this shirt you're wearing from Lulu is really nice. I'm, I'm sure you drop, I don't know, 100 bucks on it, 150 drop bucks maybe. Lulu, Lulu's nice, but it actually doesn't fit you. You know, if you look oh, snap. where your shoulder is, this is your shoulder right here. And this is where your shoulder seam is. So this shirt actually is doing you a disservice because it's making you look probably a little scrawnier than you actually are. I know you got some muscle right here. If we just yeah. size this down one size, maybe two, you would start to 
the fit would be better, it would be slimmer in your waist, it would be slimmer on your arms, you wouldn't have all this baggy stuff happening on your arms. So what we're looking for is versatility, fit for your body type, falling into the archetypes, and then making sure that it matches the weather that's going to be in LA and uh, the goals that you're going to be pursuing while you're there. Trash. All right, Donate. damn. Donate. Yeah, I, ah, that's what's tough, Travis. I noticed I bought quality things that caught my eye, but yeah. they just don't fit into the bigger picture. That does. So it's hard to let go of it, even this. So why don't we do this? Why don't we make two piles? We'll make a donate pile. Donate for sure. We'll make that's, a, that's a quality thing. This fits into your archetype, but it might need tailoring. So the question to always ask is, would I buy this piece again at full price if I were in the store looking at it? And if the answer is probably not, maybe, I don't know, donate. Just get rid of it. Okay. Like lose, lose sentimental value. If, it, if it's something is sentimental, like is a pass down, is an heirloom, we can keep that for sentimental purposes. You know what I'm getting? We know my channel, Pursuit of Possibility, it's a motivational channel. It's like sometimes you gotta let go of things you're attached to to reinvent yourself and become your best self. So maybe this is an example. This is a nice polo. Um, it doesn't match anything. The colors, the patterns, it, it's not gonna fall into our interchangeable wardrobe. Okay. So I would say donate. All right. This is nice. This can fit into the interchangeable wardrobe. It's a versatile color. There's not a lot of pattern going on. You got some micro patterns in here. This is a piece, if it's if it's a little too big and it's a little too baggy in the midsection, this, we could keep it and just get it tailored. To tailor later. Now this is interesting. Okay. Even though it's a solid color, it's just, it looks stretched out. It looks worn. I've had it, it for a while. It looks like it, it's, it's a really thick cotton. We'll, we'll probably want, what we want when we look for polos is um, something maybe a little lighter weight, especially because it's going to be beautiful year round and uh, something a little moisture wicking. So I would say um, even though this is a great solid polo, it's probably not going to be the best option to fit into the interchangeable wardrobe. So I would say donate. Okay. So this is a newer purchase. Okay. Over a break, actually. I'd be interested to see how this fits. Bright red is tough. Burgundy versus bright red. Th this will be able to match a lot more seasons, a lot more uh, outfits, versus wearing something like this is a very standout piece. So if you want to have something that pops, like this might be good. Okay. But it's not the best color for to match with every single outfit you're gonna be putting together. I'd be curious to know if this yeah. is the same. And this is a large, so what we can try these, uh, try it on yeah, after. Yeah, we'll, we'll make a, another pile for try-ons. We'll okay, great. Try-ons, right here. What's going on here? So, my favorite here. football team, I'm a <laughs> Packer fan. Well, we, gotta uh -oh. keep it. we gotta keep this, right? Like this is this is for game day. Yeah, you know, it's it's nice to have a few uh, fun pieces. So <laughs> yeah. well, I won't I won't throw oh, this away. Oh, thank we'll God! Keep this. Oh, I like this. This is light blue. This is Let's go. Uh, this is versatile. You I can, love it. You can wear this with a lot of things. The only thing I would be a little worried about again is the fit. Ooh. So I will put this in the might need to be tailored pile. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's good to see that I have a few good options. I haven't yeah. completely screwed up. So this, I, I, I love this shirt. This is Brooks Brothers. Even though there's uh, pinstripe patterns going on and it's it's thin enough of a pinstripe to where you can get a lot of versatility out of this. Yeah. So we'll put this in the um, might and, need to be tailored. And pile. this is what I've used for meetings with executives. Uh, so this is what meetings. we're gonna be going for today. We're okay. gonna be going for things like this. All right, man, so we've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and now I wanna look at your footwear. Typically, what we're gonna want is everything from casual all the way up. Can you pick up the pair of shoes that you wear to work like 90% of the time? It's gonna be these bad boys. Okay, so these are loafers. And if you actually look on the bottom here, um, there's a lot of like rubber grip. These are actually driving shoes. Uh, which is a thing, like shoes are made just for driving. Not the most formal. I wouldn't wear these to like a business meeting. Honestly, what I would wear, there's a pair of shoes here that I saw. Um, so these are wingtips and they're, uh, they're derbies. And okay. so, and then there's also some broguing. So a little uh, shoe lesson really fast. In Oxford is any shoe with a closed lacing system. Here's a good example of the difference between an Oxford and a derby. So oh. do you see how the vamp goes over the top quarter here? And then yeah. how the how it's reversed? 
So this is an Oxford and this is a Derby. And then Brogue, all Brogue is, are these decorative perforations in a shoe. That's all Brogues are. So these are gonna be less casual. So these you'll probably wear when you dress down. A button down, khakis, um, chinos, like I'm wearing uh, burgundy chinos. These would be a great pair of shoes to wear with this. When you're dressing up in a navy suit, like maybe you got a really important investment meeting, you're, you're looking About for to someone close to a deal. Like close a deal, you're wearing a suit, that's when you opt for the Oxfords. So this would be a, probably 90% of your casual, elevated casual, going to work, business casual. I would rock these. This is a great formality. Okay. I think we should also pick up a pair of uh, double monk straps because that's another super stylish um, casual footwear. Usually le leather soles are a little more formal and some shoe brands will put rubber uh, grips on their leather just so you don't slip and slide all over the cement. And then one other pair I might recommend is something like a white sneaker like I'm wearing because this can be dressed with like a casual suit and you can wear it with chinos, you can wear it with shorts, you can wear it with literally anything. And I wouldn't wear them to a business meeting, but if you're going to like a casual get together. Or I'm going, or going out in LA. You're going out in LA, like white sneakers are a staple to have. Cool, so we got a plan for shoes. Let's get going. Let's do it. All right. Awesome. All right, man, so we have here your list of staples. And this is gonna be what we build your entire wardrobe on. It's if we're building a house, we're laying the foundation right now. So we just donated, got rid of 95% of your wardrobe, right? Yeah. So now is where we start fresh and we lay a foundation. So we got here about 16, 17 items. And the goal from this is to take these 16 items and get 150 to 180 outfits out of it. You might be saying like, how is that possible? Every single item on this list can match everything else. You're essentially compounding how many items you have and you're getting the most mileage for the least amount of pieces. That's how you're gonna get that, close your eyes, grab whatever, know that it fits. So it's basically like we're opening up exponential possibility where before I was, I had a lot of items but I was really limited. Before you had a lot, of, a lot of items and a lot of guys might deal with this too. You have a lot of items in your closet and you're just staring at it and you say, yeah. how do I pair this together? What do I do? Are you ready to get going and dive on in? Yeah, let's do it. Come on. Yes. So Travis, where are we going today? Yeah, so I think the best place to get all of these staples and build this versatile, refined, rudimentary wardrobe that he's wanting to do is at Suit Supply. And right. so we just got here and we're gonna go pick out some pieces. Let's get it. Suit, cool. uh, probably a navy suit. Sure. Um, some button downs, okay. white and light blue. Maybe a couple polos. Really everything, guys. Yeah. I'm taking my wardrobe. I realized how many things that I had sentimental value that didn't actually fit me. Okay. Fair so enough. So it was kind of like a breakup, and we got rid of all of it. First steps, we would kind of find a good size for you, yeah. uh, and then we would do alterations here for what we need to get done. Cool. Um, so we probably want to start with the suit and the shirt. So here's what I would do. Uh, let's get you in a shirt first, uh, and then we'll throw on some jackets to find a good size for you. I'm gonna grab your next size real quick. Okay. okay. No, this is an awesome store. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Gotta get people checking this out. Let me grab you a fit shirt real quick. We got room right over here. So right now we're gonna get Chris's sizes and he needs to get fitted for his chest, uh, his shirt size, his sleeve length, his neck size. He's been getting the too large of clothes his whole life. So this is actually a really cool experience because he's gonna find out what size he actually is and he's gonna be able to buy the right size clothes from here on out. How's it look, guys? All right, so the shoulders look good. The sleeve length is nice. It could probably be wow. shortened a little bit. In the back, you can probably pull it in just slightly. 
You see the difference there? The shirts you had earlier, your your seam came all the way down to like your almost your tricep. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You know, you know it's not choking me. Yeah. Yeah. Just a nice like simple 15 in it. Let's throw on some jackets, cool. get a good size for you, and then we'll go from there. Cool. Perfect. How how is that fit? I would need Compared to what we were wearing, we were wearing in your closet earlier. How is this different? This feels like an extension of me. Like it, I've never had something that fits so well. It just fits perfectly. It's not baggy, but it's not too tight. Yeah, I love it. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's try it in navy. Go take a look. Yep. Wow. I just um, what I noticed too is the. Just enough room here. This is beautiful. Yeah, and honestly, off the rack fits you very nicely. Uh, the shoulders are really nice. It doesn't, honestly, I don't know if it needs too much in the back. I think it fits you really nicely. It's nice and slim. I think so too. You get that V, uh, that and V it, taper. And it's not too long. It's just, I have never had something for whatever to fit this well. What? Uh, the lining of the suit. Is it yes. half canvas, full canvas? Yeah, the, the suits are half canvas construction, so that means kind of the the canvas is going to stop at that top button there. We don't use any glue, okay? Okay, so there's uh, nothing fused. Correct, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, half canvas and full canvas suits when you're shopping for suits is what you want to look for. If something is uh, glued on, you, that's when the suit over time will start to crinkle and you'll get a lot of those wrinkles in it. With a Blake stitch, um, you can wear them with good maintenance to the upper with conditioner and leather cleaner. And once the soles wear out, you can resole. So one pair will last you 10 to 15 years. All right guys, so Chris is finishing up. He's getting his last bit of alterations and pinning and tailoring done. He's gonna have to send it off to a tailor for a couple days. And uh, he's got a special order, a few items that they didn't have in the color we wanted. But we're gonna come back when he gets all of his pieces in and we're gonna put together some amazing outfits and we're gonna show the awesome transformation that he had from what you guys saw in the beginning to what he's gonna become next. So stay tuned for that. All right guys, so it's been a couple weeks. Chris has gotten all of his outfits back from the tailor and I'm excited to put together a lot of cool stuff and we can see this awesome transformation. Let's go do it. Yo Chris, come on out man. My brother. How do you feel? This is new for you, right? I feel pretty amazing. I'm not used to looking this good, not gonna lie. So what would you say is the biggest difference between how you would dress before and this outfit? How are you dressing now? I'd say the biggest difference is, one is subjective, but the way I feel in these clothes versus what I picked out before haphazardly, I just feel amazing. The big difference is the fit. You can tell this fits me right. And it just all goes together as one cohesive outfit. Yeah. And I just feel like it's versatile too, right? This could be dressed up and a little formal or a little casual too, so yeah. So the outfit that, uh, that we put together right now is awesome for like a, a date. It's great for like a business casual meeting. We opted for this white button down to be layered with this merino wool sweater, both from Suit Supply. And actually this whole outfit's from Suit Supply. So we got the white sneakers from Suit Supply, the olive chinos, and we put it all together. I think um, one thing we can do is actually tailor these a little bit more. They're pretty good, and, I, and as you can see, I pin rolled them down here at the bottom just to get a little bit more taper at the ankle. But I think one thing that 
we could actually do is take it to the tailor a second time and just get the ankles brought in a little bit more and bring in a little bit on the thighs too. But overall, man, it looks good. And this is definitely a versatile outfit that you guys can wear. You can wear it without the sweater. You can wear it with jeans. Uh, you can wear it without the dress shirt and only the sweater. Like there's a ton of options. So cool, let's do outfit number two. Sounds good, let's do it. All right, Chris, come on out, man. Round two. Sharp, man. Thanks, brother. So for this look, I wanted him to go full out in his suit. We can see a lot of the really cool detailing. There's the pick stitching in the lapels. The jacket is tailored perfectly. The shoulders fit great. The sleeves are a perfect length. The, the sleeve width is great. Uh, it's not too tight in the midsection. We kept the same white shirt from the last uh, outfit. The pants here, it looks like we have a, a medium break going on, almost a full break. Again, this is all preference, right? So Chris, if you like having a little bit of a break right here over your shoes, it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, some guys like having no break where the pant doesn't even touch the shoe. And we opted for the brown double monks from Suit Supply. So how do you feel, man? I feel even better than outfit one. This is like, it's amazing. Is this your first suit? Did you own a suit before this? I owned a suit. Uh, everyone knows the, knows the joke about Joseph A. Bank suits. I think SNL even did a sketch about them, how they used them as paper towels to clean up messes, like yeah. one of the girls in SNL. Uh, this is like a quality suit, and it fits great. So to me, it feels like the first time. Nice. Yeah. Well, look sharp. This is great for an interview, a really formal meeting. Yeah. You could wear this to a formal event. Uh, maybe a wedding. I mean, how detail? about for me as a sales rep when I'm, you know, sitting down with the CEO to negotiate a deal or talk strategy. 100%. Um, for big time meetings and negotiations, this is really good. Yeah, uh, you're sending so. a strong message, but the Navy signals trust. So you're still emulating a, a message of authority and trust. And I think that it'll work really well for your, your CEO client meetings. All right, we're gonna go to number three. All right, Chris, let's see outfit number three, man. So for this look, this is something you can wear to like a weekend brunch, you're hanging out, you're just going around grocery shopping, kind of just your everyday outfit. Uh, if you're not in business meetings, I would say this is like a cool, really nice chill outfit. So this denim jacket we found at J. Crew. The white tee is from Suit Supply. The chinos are again from Suit Supply from Outfit One. We just reused them and we're reusing the white sneakers as well. What do you think about this fit? How do you like it? I like it. And you know what? At first I thought that um, in fact this was small, but what I realized is it actually fits perfectly. What yeah. do you look for in a, a jean jacket for size? So a denim jacket, what I look for denim. is um, fitted around the sleeves. Oftentimes denim jackets are going to be real, have really loose sleeves. So I like that this one's nicely fitted. It's not supposed to come as far down as a suit jacket. It's supposed to fall right at your waist, and it's okay that your shirt is showing a little bit right here. I think it like adds real, a lot of character to the outfit. Denim, denim and leather jackets are typically just a little bit shorter. I think it fits you great because uh, you can even use it as like a middle piece if you wanted to throw a blazer on over this. He could button this and almost use the denim jacket as a waistcoat or a vest. It'd be a really nice middle piece, and since it doesn't come down all the way, it would look really nicely layered. The one thing I wanna say about all the pieces we got, we got 15 pieces in total. And I've shown three outfits, but in reality, we could have put together a hundred because every piece matches with every single piece. The suit you wore, you could have used a blazer with this, and you could have kept the white button down on. You could have swapped the white for the double monks. Building a versatile wardrobe that is stylish, everything fits nicely. Yeah, it's not a wardrobe anymore where I go in and I'm looking for things to wear and I have a million things because I'm like, oh, that's actually, I don't even like that shirt that much. And yet I have it, right? Maybe I have it for sentimental reasons and that's important, but now it's like the wardrobe is drastically simplified. It's clean, 
and yet I could make a million outfits with it. And it's yeah. straightforward, so thank you for what you've done. And by the way, I was gonna say before, I've never even owned a denim jacket before, so that's nice. kinda cool. You know, yeah. I've really expanded my sense of fashion, thanks to you. Yeah, man, uh, I think you look great. I think uh, you are gonna be set up, because you're moving to LA, and you're gonna yes. have a new wardrobe and a new life. I'm moving to LA really soon. It's a new chapter, I'm excited, and this did get me set up well for it. I love it. Cool, man. All right, bro. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my wardrobe transformation journey as much as I did. If you have one takeaway, it's this. Self-love is so important. Invest in yourself. It might be a wardrobe makeover. Know you're worth it. It might be getting a nice massage. You're totally worth it. All right, guys, so that was the, you got to see the whole process that I use with all of my clients when they hire me for full service styling. I take them and do their st style discovery session. We purge their closet, we make a list of staples, we go to the appropriate store, build a wardrobe from the most minimum amount of pieces to get the maximum amount of outfits, and then we see the brand new them. So if you guys wanna see more makeover videos like that, let me know in the comments, I'll love to make more, and uh, stay stylish, peace.